Hello, nurses, and welcome to this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. My name is Bridget Sager, and I'm your host. I'm a functional medicine nurse practitioner. I teach functional medicine to nurses and nurse practitioners through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy in partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine. And today I have a special guest with us. Her name is Lauren Briggs, and I wanted to take a minute to introduce her. Hi, Lauren. Hi. So glad to be here today. Thank you for being with us. Lauren is a registered nurse, a nurse coach, a registered yoga teacher, and she has taken the Functional Medicine for Nurses course through Inca. Um, So today we are going to talk about her practice and how she's using what she's learned. And um, I'm excited to hear more of your journey to becoming a a functional nurse and a nurse coach. Um, So I wanted to start by introducing Lauren and saying that she is a nurse that has been practicing in New York and Connecticut for over 12 years. So she has worked specifically in functional medicine for the past five years years and owns her own practice, which is called Practical Medicine. And she specializes in gut health, hormones, and migraines. And she loves helping people find the root cause of their ailments and coaching them back to a healthy state naturally. Lauren is really proud to have transitioned from being a burned out nurse to being able to feel aligned in her own practice um, and practices a natural lifestyle, coordinates with an organic CSA, and likes to promote Uh, people knowing where their food is coming from and uh, promoting small farms, which both those are big topics for me too. And I try to grow a lot of our food when I'm able to. So very cool. Um, And so I would like to start Lauren by thanking you for being here and having you tell us about your journey to becoming a nurse and a functional nurse coach. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, I started my nursing journey 13 years ago. Um, I worked in an emergency room um, and quickly found out that, you know, a lot of medicine is, you know, pushing pills and getting people healthy in that moment, but not necessarily giving them the tools that they need to take home to become healthier um, and not end up back in the hospital. So um, to avoid that frequent flyer syndrome, you know, I did some soul searching myself and um, ended up leaving the hospital and starting in a functional medicine practice um, at the Blum Center with Susan Blum as the nurse manager there in order to um, help really discover um, holistic wellness and how to help people to get healthy um, at home, you know, and not have to have these, you know, frequent flyer episodes back in hospitals. So yeah, that's um, kind of how I discovered it. Uh, During 2020, when COVID hit and the pandemic started, they ended up going virtual. So um, I had a, a quiet moment there where I was able to reflect and decided that I wanted to open my own practice and that I would begin the nurse coaching program at Inca in order to do that. So I took that time um, and became a board certified nurse coach in 2021, opened my own practice, practical medicine uh, in downtown Stamford, Connecticut. And then um, in 2022, I actually came back a second time and certified in functional medicine with you during your course, um, functional medicine for nurses and rebranded myself as a functional medicine nurse coach. So I do a little bit of both in my private practice and I've never felt more aligned um, as being a nurse and very renewed. Um, I've, you know, I've always wanted to really help people to stay healthy. And I feel that now that I'm really doing that. Can you, for those nurses listening that do not know so much about nurse coaching, can you talk a little bit about what you do with that? Like, what does that mean to you and how are you using those two in your practice? So nurse coaching is similar to health coaching, but we're doing it under our nursing license. So we are using our nursing education um, and a bit of um, motivation and some special tools under our belt to help people to stay on task and focused in making changes in their life and setting goals and intentions. And that is kind of how we're bringing together um, the nurse and the health coaching aspects. I love that that translates to functional medicine as well, because when I work with a client and they come up with a specific goal, um, 
then I'm able to help them to fulfill those goals. Whereas in you know most functional medicine models, you will have a functional medicine practitioner who will help you to find that root cause analysis. And then they will send you to a health coach mm -hmm. um, to come up with those specific goals. So I, I love that it's kind of a one-stop shop and you have one person who understands the whole story and can really help you through step-by-step. And I was, I'm thinking about that term that you mentioned earlier of the frequent flyer syndrome. And that is absolutely how I felt when I worked in the hospital was, and it is exactly that you're like seeing somebody come back that you've already seen with the same problems and you go to do the teaching and it's the, it, it's like, it's the same revolving conversation. And it's so heartbreaking as a nurse, that's really like in it to heal people and, and help people not need to come in the hospital. And so I have a feeling that you can relate to my experience in, you know, becoming a nurse coach. And for me, becoming a nurse coach was so wonderful to learn, oh, I'm not the expert anymore, right? They are the expert in their lives and their bodies, and I'm just going to support them and not have all the answers. And then you learn functional medicine and you're like, this is it. This is exactly what I was looking for. Like, I want to know what to tell them, like healthcare is confusing and how can I help them get better? And so we're in on a similar journey where being in the hospital and feeling that, that level of frustration with what you called frequent flyer syndrome, which is great. And then transitioning all the way over to the other end of it, where like you have this great set of tools to help somebody really, truly stay out of the hospital and not just that, but be as well as possible. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing to have both in connection with one another um, because you really can help someone to stay out of the hospital, be healthy. Um, you know, if they're trying to come off medicines and, and you know, work on their diet, you know, those things take time and um, they, need, they need the motivation behind it too. So it's, it's great to be that person who's going to help them along their journey. Absolutely. And lately, I've noticed a lot of my students want to hear more about other functional nurses, nurse coaches, what their practices look like. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about what it looks like for somebody to work with you. Like, what is that experience? What is your role? Yeah. So um, in private practice as a functional medicine nurse coach, it's a little bit different than seeing um, an allopathic practitioner. The main difference is the time. So someone who's coming to see me is coming to see me for a lot longer. You know, we don't get much accomplished in 10 to 15 minutes. So, you know, my initial appointment is between two and three hours, and that's going to give us a really detailed health history um, and go over all the lifestyle medicine models to try and figure out what's going on in your life at this current moment and everything that's led up to it, um, get a really good timeline going. And so, um, you know, when they come in to see me, you are going to, um, you know, sit in a big comfy chair, you know, and have a cup of tea and just have a real conversation with somebody about, you know, everything that's been going on in your health history and everything in your life to this point, just so different, you know, than what we're used to, which is just, you know, in and out in 15 minutes or less. <laughs> exam table gown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, very different um, feeling. It's much more comfortable. Uh, and, and, you know, it's like almost having a conversation with a friend. It's, you know, um, because we, we're not as clinical. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so workflow wise for you, you know, we, we talk a lot about like how people are going to set their practice up and what that would look like and how much information they want from people. Are you getting like a big intake beforehand and reviewing that before the visit? Or are you doing most of that during your first visit? How do you do that? Um, during the first visit, I like to get eyes on and, you know, just try and put it all together in that moment. And there's a lot of questions to be asked. So I um, do the entire initial um, in person other than, you know, some forms that are online beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think, you know, people ask me about paperwork all the time and I'm like, everybody is, it's just like a nursing brain when you start as a new nurse and you have to learn where you're going to put everything on which form you like that works at the place that you're at. And even like when I worked in the hospital, I would work, you know, in the ICU and have a form 
that I filled out like a nursing brain that was one whole side for each patient. And then I would work on some floors where I only needed, you know, the front of one page for five patients because I didn't need as detailed information. Um, and so I like to use that as my explanation for when people ask me, you know, what paperwork do you have for us is uh, that, you know, everybody's going to be different. You know, you can see mine, but but you might be completely different. It sounds like you're way on the other end of it where you're trying to get most of the history during that visit when you're actually face to face with them, which yeah. is awesome. I'm sure your patients love that. They do. Um, I think they really appreciate it. And most of them actually say that, you know, that's such a difference from what they've experienced before. And nobody's asked them what their childhood was like, you know, um, we go as far back as possible and try and put the entire timeline together for them. Uh, so that way we can come up with a root cause analysis. And it's really interesting when numbers and years start to reappear. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see, you know, um, oh, this happened in this year. And oh, the next year you started to not feel well, you know, like, oh, okay. <laughs> and they, they start to get an actual answer. And you know, that's, it's just so wonderful to see that and give them what they they've been looking for for years. Yes. That, that moment when you, you point out for somebody like, you know, that we talk in functional medicine about reviewing somebody's timeline with them and how powerful that can be. And you can do that mm -hmm. casually in a conversation like you're talking about. And uh, some practitioners really, uh, focus on hearing the whole story, drawing it, and then showing it and telling it, you know, like visually. But regardless of how you do it, it's the idea of saying it back to them. And I I don't know how many times I've done that, pointed out what you just said, like, oh, so it sounds like right before this thing that you're here for, right. <laughs> this happened. And you connect that dot and they're like, oh my gosh, like nobody's even taken the time to hear enough of my story to understand. But I personally, have, as the patient, they've never like connected the dots of a lot of times it's like a trauma or an illness or something, you know, and they have never realized because maybe they're separated by weeks or months or um, simmered for a year, you know, of stress. And so that really, really good example of in those visits, those moments where they're like, wow, like, this is the first time that I feel heard that I'm not just told everything's normal. And somebody's like you said, asking about my childhood. Like, what is this? <laughs> I know it's, um, definitely different. You know, they're, they're not expecting that when they walk in the door, we're going to go that far back. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> so, so your practice different than mine, like, you know, mine is virtual and yours is like in a big cush couch with tea. Uh, but I'm wondering, like setting all that up, like as you created your, your business and set up your practice, what do you feel like has been the most challenging thing in doing that? Uh, yeah, so I think the biggest challenge, um, you know, once you get past setting up your business, um, is really promoting yourself and, you know, getting a regular influx of clients. Um, and that's not something that we're taught. And it's, it's not something that comes naturally. It's really difficult to figure out how to promote yourself to everyone that you meet <laughs> professionally. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and you have to kind of struggle a little bit at first and practice and, eventually it will come naturally and you have to do that in order for them for everyone to know who you are and what you do so that they can you know refer you to a friend a family member or even themselves um and so that's really important i think and that's something that sh i've struggled with before and, and i think that i've gotten a good system now um for helping me get clients in um, a regular basis i do a lot of um, low-cost classes uh, and events in order to help educate and also let them know that I am there. Like my last one was about gut health. And I, I spoke to a room of complete strangers about um, what is leaky gut syndrome <laughs> and the signs and symptoms of that and, you know, how we uh, do gut healing and and most importantly, how they can find my services as a functional medicine nurse coach. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that really helps to, you know, get people coming back for and signing up as clients. I think that is one of the wisest ways to go about it because people have to trust you. And the only way they're going to do that is if they see you and they hear you and they believe what you're talking about and can connect with you enough to want to invest in, in their health with you. So I, I feel like those types of, um, events are a really great way to get clients, especially locally. If you're like doing one-on-one in-person visits. Um, so 
that's a, a great example of that. So you were just talking about the idea of talking about and promoting yourself. And I can absolutely relate to that. It makes me think of in Inca's nurse coaching program that I know you did also is that they have you practice the elevator pitch kind of thing, <laughs> yes. how to talk about yourself briefly. And you get to where you're like, okay, at that. And then you learn functional medicine and you're like, wait, I don't even know how to tell somebody what this is mm -hmm. without rambling for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and so often my students will have like a Zoom meeting and we'll all be talking about like, what are you struggling with right now? Or what is really easy for you? And it always comes up that somebody is like, I'm trying to tell people what this is. And I don't know how to do it briefly. Um, and I feel like it's just you have to just keep doing it until you get good at it. And you realize what you say that actually speaks to the person you're talking to. Yes. And you see the light bulb go off and they're like, Oh, now I get it. And I often, you know, I use hypertension as an example all the time because it's a very fast way to explain functional medicine is to just say, you know, what is the reason that somebody has hypertension? Is it sleep apnea? Is it a nutrient deficiency? Is it stress? You know, and I, I'll name off 10 things and then I say, we figure that out and we address that. And so they don't have hypertension anymore. And it's the simplest way that I, cause, because trying to like define functional medicine can be so difficult. Um, so I know what you mean, like like getting out there and telling people who you are and what you offer and how it's different from what they've experienced in the past is really trial and error to like learn how to say it with confidence. And then you add in the fact that you're telling them about this offering that they've probably never heard of before on top of that, right? Like you're a nurse, but you're also offering coaching and you're offering functional medicine. What does all that mean? <laughs> yes. And what would that look like? And so then until they have a visit with you, it's like... <laughs> Let me figure out how to talk to you about this. So I think that those those um, those group meetings that you're talking about where you're just introducing a topic is a great way to do that. I really like that idea. Thanks. Yeah, it's been working really well um, since I started implementing it. And I've had a uh, more regular steady sources of clients coming in the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I am... Remembering, you know, in the course you mentioned in in several of the things that you wrote and talked about, and you mentioned it in your bio that, you know, migraines has been a big topic in your practice. And that I feel like is migraines are such a great thing to target with functional medicine. Like I'm always excited about them because we can really help people change their lives because it's so debilitating to have frequent migraines. So I was hoping that you could speak a little bit to what it is like, you know, you, if, if your practice is like mine, you work with somebody, you come up with a plan, they leave, they come back, you know, several weeks or months later, and you do a follow up. What is it like for you as a nurse to, to help somebody with migraines and have them come back better? Oh, man, it is. It is fulfilling. It is very fulfilling to know that, you know, I've actually helped someone, um, I have one client who struggled with migraines for 20 years, saw every different doctor, no one that was able to help her medicine after medicine. Um, and, you know, she worked with me for three months and we did a lot of trigger journaling and um, trying to figure out why this was happening and was able to really get down to a root cause for her. And she left three months later and she said, you know, I haven't had a migraine this entire month. And the next month when I saw her, the same thing and the same thing and the same thing, you know, and it was over and over until, um, you know, we decided that we were going to end our relationship as, <laughs> as a client because she really did feel like we had solved the issue for her. Um, and she was so thankful. And I was so I felt so fulfilled, you know, that, you know, I was able to help someone to not have to suffer from migraines because personally I've suffered from them for 25 years. And so, you know, I know what that's like. Uh, I know what the pain is like, and it's just something no one ever wants to have to struggle with. So it's, it's an amazing thing when you can figure out the why and fix it. <laughs> yes. And, you know, functional medicine is different. Like I, I, when I talk to students about like, you know, Go do the thing that you're going to ask your patients to do so that you can speak to it. And in in allopathic Western medicine, that sounds crazy. Like you you wouldn't go take the medication that your patients are going to take. But the experience of doing a lot of what we 
do like go going through an elimination diet or whatever whatever thing you're going to ask them to do try to experience it yourself first so you can speak to it and i think that one of the things that gives a lot of functional nurses the most credibility is our journey to functional medicine often includes us healing ourselves and so then you can speak with conviction when you're telling somebody i had what you have and it is no longer a problem for me because i have done what i'm going to ask you to do and I think that gets so much buy-in and yours, it, like with migraines, it's like, I mean, people miss work. It affects their relationships, their ability to be a parent or a partner or, you know, care for others, have an income, have a home. Like migraines can really ruin somebody's life. And so I, I feel like in particular, your, your patients hearing from you, that must be really meaningful for them to be able to hear you say, I'm going to ask you to do things I've done. <laughs> it really is. And it gives them a, a good confidence. And I'm able to speak to it better as well, because I know what it felt like when I did it. Um, and I'm able to explain it so much more thoroughly for what they can expect as they go through the process. So what do you feel like functional medicine has done for your nursing career? Because you talked a little bit in your write up that I before we went were on here today about that you were proud of transitioning from a burned out nurse to having your own practice. Can you talk a little bit about that? And and what it has meant for your nursing career? Yeah, I'm I have never been happier in my nursing career. I never felt aligned with Band-Aid medicine. Um, you know, I never thought when I went into nursing, I went into nursing to help people and I never thought I'd be pushing so many pills <laughs> and feeling um, undervalued and unappreciated uh, in, in working in the hospital. Um, and so when I went into functional medicine and into private practice, especially, you know, the, everything changes, you know, I just felt like that's when I felt not only aligned with my practice, but also fulfilled. Like I really felt good as a nurse. You know, I felt this feeling of burnout, but, you know, I never felt burned out as wanting to be a nurse and wanting to help people. That desire still maintained true for me. The problem was the system and I had to kind of just transition into a new one. Um, and it was available. And I, I love that, you know, we are able to do this now and, and help people. And, you know, I've, I've never felt more fulfilled in my practice as a nurse now, as I do in functional medicine as a nurse coach. <laughs> I love that, that there was never a moment where you didn't want to be a nurse. It was that is because that, that sums it up, I think, for a lot of a lot of nurses is it's the system. You know, mm -hmm. it isn't the not wanting to help people. Very few nurses are like, oh, I don't want to help people anymore. <laughs> you know, it's the, I don't want to I don't want to run in this wheel anymore. Yes. And I often talk about that idea of and when I taught in, in uh, a nursing program, I realized like, we're just teaching nurses, like we give this foundation that, that feels holistic, right? Like we learn about the whole body and nurses are probably the most holistically trained practice. I, I, I would imagine. Absolutely. And so I always feel like when nurses come to my program, like you learned this, you learned this foundation in nursing school, just nobody ever told you to believe that it works. And so we leave nursing school and we're passing medications. Most nurses get a job in a hospital or a long-term care facility or somewhere where they are just functioning in a medical system instead of a health system and a health promoting system. And it's very heartbreaking for somebody that's calling initially to come to nursing was to help people heal or, or promote wellness. Um, and so I think I think you're the same as me coming coming to functional medicine is like, oh, my gosh, this is what I was thinking about the whole time. <laughs> it's so true. It is what we learned. You know, we learned all about um, sleep and stress. And <laughs> and then we get there and, and that's um, we have no time for that right now. So <laughs> let's just hand them a bill. <laughs> yes, yes. And sometimes I'll talk to nurses like like people that I've known for years that are not trained in functional medicine at all. And you start to talk about those things that sound so simple, like sleep and stress and, and foods. And because they've been in the system of medicine for so long, it sounds like complete quackery. And it like, it's kind of like describing functional medicine briefly. You can't convince somebody of how powerful what we do is until they experience it for themselves. And that takes a little bit of a jump off a cliff, right? <laughs> I'm going to go against the grain a little bit and realize that there's more that I can offer. 
Absolutely. It's so important. You know, we need to take care of ourselves first. Oh, yes. Yeah. And when you learn functional medicine, right, you you learn how to take better care of yourself. I'm thinking too about, uh, I wanted to ask you while you were talking a little bit ago, I was thinking about confidence. And a lot of times students will ask me, when I finish your course, will I feel confident enough to have my own practice? Or will I want to have my own practice? Um, will I feel confident using what we're learning? And um, I was kind of curious, like, well, I'm going to preface this by saying I had no plans of having any business of my own ever in my whole life, really, until I learned nurse coaching and started to think about maybe having a little nurse coaching practice on the side while I was doing primary care. And then ultimately I learned functional medicine. I was like, I need a place to do this. So I'm going to grow what I already started into something bigger. And so I'm curious for you, were you always an entrepreneur or did you grow into this? Can you speak to that a little bit? Um, so I had a little bit of an entrepreneur background. Um, I was a figure skating instructor, <laughs> small business doing that oh, wow. before I became a nurse. Um, and when I transitioned into being a nurse, then, you know, it was just the traditional model of being a nurse. You know, you, you're not working for yourself, you're working for someone else. Um, it wasn't until I took the nurse coaching course that really I, I got the, the push um, to be confident enough to uh, start my own practice. And yeah, it's, it's just been everything to me since then. So I, I couldn't see going backwards, but uh, you do need, you know, a little bit of patience with yourself and, and learning on the go, <laughs> because it, it takes time to figure all that out. Yes. <laughs> it is everything. Like, it's hard to describe to other people how it, having your own practice is everything. It's wonderful. Yeah. But we were talking before we hit record about you're not just a nurse anymore. You're a tech master. And <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn a lot of laws and rules and it's so true. keep on top of a lot of things that have nothing to do with nursing, yes, right? Yes. Just figuring out every little online system, you know, how do I send this recommendation to them? How do I send that test, you know? And every time you think you've mastered it, they change it. Yes. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you kind of roll the punches. <laughs> it is. It's kind of like when I worked in the hospital, I felt like they were always like, oh, we're going to unravel this new electronic health record or whatever. It was always some changes. Was. And I was like, please stop. I mean, I appreciate <laughs> like advancements and things, but like, please stop. And I, I, I hear what you're saying. Like you, you finally get comfortable with some techie thing you need for your business. And then you have to learn the new version. Or... Yeah. <laughs> so the confidence part, I, I think grows. Right. And like, we talk in sure. the course a lot about like, I can tell you all day long, the things that are fundamental about functional medicine, but until just like when you finish nursing school, until you go use them on people and have them like you're talking about the migraines, they come back and follow up and you get to see how it worked and what was a struggle for them. And you can use some coaching there and like, okay, what got in your way? How can we get past this? Is this still your goal? And that confidence grows as a nurse coach, as a new RN, mm -hmm. as, as a nurse practitioner, if somebody's a nurse practitioner, in functional medicine, it's all that same experience where like you have to use it on real people and and help them. But we're using things that are very safe and fundamental to just life. Like we're just pointing out some pretty basic stuff. And I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Like, like, cause functional medicine until you learn it sounds really like, what the heck is this gonna be? And you then you learn it, you're like, oh wow, okay. Yeah, it all makes sense then, you know. Um and it's really, it's lovely to have been able to try it in my own shoes. You know, I went through um, testing and I did a GI map so I could explain it better to people. And also when you do that, you start to realize, oh, I may need to make some changes myself, you know, and explaining eating hygiene to people seems so basic, but does anyone actually chew their food 30 times before they swallow? Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> you need to slow down. <laughs> so bit of putting all that together. Um, and it really does make such a difference when you're thinking about it in that, that way that it's such a simple task, but uh, it doesn't seem simple, you know, unless it's pointed out to you. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of times when I go to I like tell my clients things, I'm like, okay, this is going to sound really simple, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's so yeah. important. So just humor me, <laughs> give it a try. Right. Like sit down at a table and read, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> yes, yes. Lauren, before we wrap up, I wanted to give you a chance to share anything on your mind with the nurses that are considering a similar path to you. So like if they're thinking about opening their own practice, becoming a nurse coach or learning functional medicine, anything you wanted to share? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, feel free to check out my website if you are thinking about becoming a nurse coach, because it's, it's really helpful to see what that looks like on the other end, you know, and what mm -hmm. functional medicine as a nurse coach can be, um, and what my offerings are and everything on there. And then, you know, uh, just a side note, but I, I also work as an admissions counselor um, at Inca, um, the Integrative Nurse Coaching Academy. So, you know, if they are interested in pursuing any of these programs, then they can reach out to me uh, on the website. Um, it's inursecoach.com slash admissions. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and there's a button to hit for, you know, to schedule a call. And you can choose my name, Lauren Briggs, uh, in the drop down menu. So that way, you know, they can get to me directly if they do want to schedule a free call with me to discuss. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, and so we're going to have information in the show notes um, for your website and, and ways for people to reach out to you. And I really wanted to thank you for sharing your journey to practicing functional medicine and what that experience is like for you. It has been lovely to talk to you today. And I just really appreciate your insights into your own practice too. Sharing those with other nurses, I think is so meaningful. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. If you want to help spread the word about the powerful role nurses can play as true healers using functional medicine practices, consider sharing an episode with a nurse friend or on social media. And click the subscribe button to stay informed of newly released episodes. You can also visit and share the links below in the show notes for more information on nursing resources and the Functional Medicine for Nurses course offered through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy in partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine.